What's up, metalheads and rockers? As you know, I'm Al Denton. I'm with Underground Noise Webzine. I'm here with my homie, co-host, Rhino. And See this is episode number 121. And we're interviewing the band Traumatic Asphyxia out of the state of Tennessee. Welcome, dudes. What's up, John? Hey, Jim. Hey, what's up? Yeah, welcome to our show. Awesome. Yeah, good to be glad, here. Yeah, glad, glad to be here. Yeah, it's good to see you guys. The first question I'd like to throw at, throw at you guys would be this. How long ago did Traumatic Asphyxia start its musical journey? It was uh, late uh, 2017. And I started this, uh, I, of course, I was by myself. So I, I used drum programs, that kind of stuff. And then uh, eventually was introduced to Johnny, which took over vocals because uh, I, I can't do them. So, But yeah, we started late 2017 and we've progressed every, as we've gone along. That's really awesome. And you guys are only two members, kind of like Mortician and Nausum. Yeah. Name a couple of bands. Two guys. What's yeah. that? Yeah, just uh, yeah, just two guys. That's that's it. You know, um, uh, you know bands like uh, Blood Soaked and and Putrid Pile and Jimmy produced me too. You know, it just goes to show that uh, you know, it, you don't have to have a, a full piece band. You know, to to do uh, you know, extreme brutal death metal music, and uh, but yeah, he uh. He, Jim, he uh, does all the guitars, and, uh, bass tracks, and uh, he does the uh, drum programming, samples, and uh, I just uh, do the guttural. I write the lyrics. That's cool. So you're the guy that wants to get in people's faces at shows so you can just yell at them some more, you know? <laughs> Rhino, you got, you got some questions? Well, the first one's a two-part question. Uh, um, okay, just go with me. Do you know the Oak Ridge Boys, and are they fans of yours? The Oak Ridge Boys? No, I don't know the Oak Ridge Boys. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a good question. I, I, I knew Elvira. Yep. What's your go-to tuning and with, with what you're writing now? Uh, I'm tuned at a G in drop D format. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I did A for a while, then I decided to try that G. It, 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 to me, it sounded good. So. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Odd question. Advice to your 10 year old selves. <laughs> <laughs> When it starts playing music, or oh, you pick. Uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, that's got you. Started. I would. I would have to. If, if I was going to encounter my ten-year-old self, I'd have to tell him, say, "Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, don't get hopped up and make any bad decisions." <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would tell my ten year old self. Don't fuck anything up, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Wear that condom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, know. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before you tap it, make sure you wrap it. <laughs> I was like, oh man, the Oak Ridge boys, shit. Yeah. Oh, we <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're the fucking open boards are brutal they're maniacal man well considering the, the the Y-12 and the nuclear stuff yeah they might be brutal <laughs> <laughs> that's funny you mentioned the Oak Ridge boys you could always do like Oak Ridge death metal cover <laughs> yeah I was thinking that myself, <laughs> but at the same time you could also do a death metal cover of just the two of us <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, could you imagine how funny that would sound? I mean, it's kind of like I when you succeed under different years. 
Oh, uh, yeah, that would be kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, that's yeah. not my bridge. <laughs> what throws me off down there, someone says something's close, it's two hours away. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, overall, I, I like Oak, Oak Ridge. I'm originally from South Carolina. No, I like going down down to Tennessee. It's relaxing. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, oh, we got it all, man. You know, mountains. And, you know, there's certain areas where it's you know it's real peaceful and you know the tranquility and serenity and uh, just to get away from it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You have a town drunk down there. Do we have, do you have a town drunk? Uh, we did there for a little while, but I think he passed away. <laughs> <laughs> Probably too much radiation, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you drink too much of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I probably got too many three-eyed fish. <laughs> hey, man, three eyed sure fish. It wasn't moonshine. Uh, uh, it, it could be. Or maybe uh, embalming fluid. Or yeah. I'll be more of that. <laughs> I, know, I know it wasn't fentanyl, so hey. <laughs> it might be involving fluid that's radiated. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, radi radiated embalming fluid. Yeah, well, uh, where we at? We're like three miles from uh, uh, what they call Y-12. It's a nuclear facility. If anybody knows any history about Oak Ridge, that's where the atomic bomb Yes, that's where we're there. Yes. And it was, I can't remember what it was, but someone was talking about they had a dream of that town being developed and there was a strange building. And it was like 10 years before that building went up. Ah. Wow. That's I had crazy. no idea. I had no idea that was like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if something ever happened, we wouldn't be around. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we wouldn't have a chance to ruin. <laughs> this is an interesting question for you guys. How did you come up with your band name? How did we come up with our band names? I was uh, I was searching for uh, like medical terminology type stuff, and I come across that, and I was like, that actually sounds pretty good. So we decided to go with it. And the cool story is, I had an EMT. Uh, comment on one of my videos, and he always thought traumatic and fixy would be a good band name. It is. Well, thank and, you very much. And as far as I know, I don't think nobody else uses that name for a band. I mean, he's generally I search everything because I don't want to, you know, step on somebody else's toes. That's fair. I mean, it's a very catchy name. It grabs your attention when you see it. it's just like, whoa, that sounds kind of kind of evil in a way, you know. But at the same time, it's it's unique. You hear a name like Dramatic Asphyxia, you know, you you know you're gonna it's gonna be maniacal and brutal and gore soaked and gore splattered each and every time. So uh, awesome. Yeah. What bands influence you guys? Uh, go ahead. Uh, bands that influence me, man, uh <laughs> Do we have any time? <laughs> uh, oh, I started getting back in the metal. Um, back in uh, 91. And I was just a kid. And uh, my first introduction to metal was Slayer Halloween's. And uh, that, that was on a uh, tape cassette. And after that, I just, you know, I, I hit the ground running. You know, bands such like, uh, such bands as Autopsy, you know. Uh, repulsion, uh, Malevolent Creation, uh, Early Carcass, Pungent Stench, uh, Exhumed, Mortician, uh, Deicide, definitely, Diabolic, Morbid Angel. Uh, a lot of bands, man. Uh, Benediction, totally. Uh, Incantation, Immolation. That goes way back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Napalm Death, uh, terrorizer, defecation, you know, uh, brutal truth, you know, uh, battery. Just, uh, man, I could go on and on. Uh, 
But, you, know, you know, yeah, back in the early, you know, getting into uh, metal music, we didn't have a lot of platforms. You know, well, it was basically just going to record shops and a friend getting to send us stuff. And, uh, you know, underground magazines. I used to get a magazine called uh, Metal Mania, Underground and Obscure, uh, uh, Death Metal Bands, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, Rick Mortis was a big, a huge influence for sure. Uh, you know, especially like here in the South, you know, mm -hmm. they were, yeah, those were like our, our, our heroes, uh, you know, me growing up. And, uh, yeah, awesome. definitely bands like that for sure. You know, it's funny they bring up the band called Mank, because I was just thinking about their album called Ben Caught Buttering. I'm sure you guys remember that one. Yeah, oh, great album. Yes. Great. What I would like oh, to know yeah. is, so what the so hell is so buttering? So I mean, what does buttering mean? <laughs> <laughs> that, I don't know. Is there any meaning behind it? <laughs> I mean, what do you get out of that, Rhino? Ben Caught uh, <laughs> Is that like, well, I'm hungry, so everything has a different meaning right now. Okay, because I thought maybe it had, <laughs> I, th I thought maybe it had something to do with churning butter or something. You know what I mean? Get out the butter churn. Here we go. You know, <laughs> go churn yourself. I think I think it's a different kind of. That's right. That's right. Go churn yourself. Go butter yourself your own muffin. <laughs> Generic KY. Oh. Bam, bam, from yeah. <laughs> that too, dude. For real, that's funny shit. <laughs> hey, Jim, you got a guitar nearby? Yep, yeah, I sure do. Awesome. This segment's called Show Me Your Axe. Show me your axe. Nice little guttural there from Mr. John Gillahan. I hope I'm saying your name right. Yeah. And people get my, my last name wrong the whole time. Gallagher, Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is my it's Ibanez, uh Iron label, H string. That's a beautiful. This right here is I don't know, I've got this is the one I played mostly. That's beautiful. Yeah, that looks really monstrous. Here we go. That yeah, nice? I got into uh, seven, eight strings the last couple of years. Prior to that, it was always six string. Yeah, that's a badass looking guitar. Is that neck through? No, it's bolt on. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a beast of a guitar. But it, it, like I said, it, yeah, it's uh, the Iron Label. It comes with the EMG eighty one eighty five. I'm a uh, big M EMG. I'm going to get towards heaven. That's awesome. So help me understand something about EMG pickups. Are they passive or are they active? Uh, they're active pickups. Okay. So it requires a battery for when you, you hit the kill yes. switch, right? Yep. I don't know. It's, just, it's got a meaner sound to it. It's got more of a metal sound than the passive. But there, there, there's some good passive pickups. That's really cool. What else you got, Rhino? What other questions you want to slap these guys with? Well, real quick, regarding the eight string, because I haven't been to the stores in a while. Um, are you able now to buy um, string packs for seven and eights, or do you still have to buy bass strings and deal with it? Uh, early on, it used to be bass strings. Now they do sell seven and eight. Oh, great. There you go. I got one right here. Oh, and nice. Ernie Balls. <laughs> but early on when I was playing at the low tune I'd have to get a bass string usually a 65 or 70 and it was such a pain in the butt because you had to drill the eye hole out on on the tuner so you can get the string oh, yeah. so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm that they actually make packs now that I don't have to do all that that's yeah that's <laughs> very beneficial what do you guys do out there non-musically for enjoyment? Non-musically. Me, I'm a homebody. 
because <laughs> I work 12 hours a day. So <laughs> if I don't have anything planned, I sit on the couch and watch TV. All right. I get away, you know. I, I go out into nature and, you know, just enjoy the, uh, just enjoy getting away from, you know, the uh, monotonous and the repetitive everyday society. That's what I do. Oh, same here. Yeah, you know. Sure. Yeah, excellent. Uh, weirdest musical experience. Can be anything. Just the craziest thing that ever happened. He's got some good ones. So the weirdest, the weirdest experience. Well, I was doing a, it was kind of funny. I was doing a uh, previous band I played in back in the late 90s. We was doing a show outside of Atlanta and had this uh, drunk Mexican guy get up on stage and he was head banging hair, getting caught up in my strings and stuff. And then he decided to grab the microphone from our singer and out the door he went. <laughs> I've never seen <laughs> people move so oh, fast oh. to get stage. I was tripping out on it. I was like, it bothered me. <laughs> But yeah, the moment he grabbed that mic, it was all she wrote. Oh yes, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> the way I looked at it is the guy was having a good time. So, but you know, I got no control over some, uh, you know, venue security. Yeah, uh, I, guy grabs Harley's mic. Like, Ugh. and I'm like, will security please get this before Harley gets involved? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's a beast, third degree black belt in Bu Jitsu. <laughs> like, you don't want him coming to get his mic. No, as I say, that's the wrong person to be messing with. <laughs> yeah, don't get your ass beat for something that you could have easily prevented. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as as Ben Skinless would put it, don't risk infection. Oh, yeah. man, Skinless. Great band. They're phenomenal. I yeah. think they're still together, aren't they, John? You still? know what? Uh, they came out with that. I think they are. I think they still are. They came out with the, the last album. Not, not too, too terribly long ago, Alex. So. They've always been great, man. <laughs> yeah, the last yeah, album I remember playing like, was uh, Trample the Weak, Hurdle the Dead. Yes, yes. What a strange so, album title. I found out about them on uh, uh, they, on uh, Relapse Recordings. Um, I don't know if they are now, but, but that's how I found out about them. And, uh, Oh man, they are just—they're blistering, man. Scathing, you know. Really? By the way, I'm loving the Gigi vibe. Oh, you know, hey, we talked about Gigi, didn't we? Yeah, we. Yeah, I remember we had a conversation about him. Uh, you know, I've always, you know, I was like uh, growing up, like talking about bands and everything. I, I first started playing music when I was 15 and 16, and I was playing guitar for uh, you know, just a few garage punk rock bands. And uh, uh, back then, you know, I you know I didn't know any chords, and you know, I didn't have any talent, you know, and and uh, that's that's how I I started playing music. You know, matter of fact, our first show was at a all ages show, and uh, we about started a riot. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Riots are always fun. I don't think I could ever do like Gigi did. You know, no. Shove a microphone up your ass. <laughs> roll around and shit. You know, you know. Yeah, that wouldn't fly anywhere in a venue today. Not direct. But now I got a lot of roots in punk, man. You know, big punk rock fan. You know, uh, you know I mean, it was just one of the many, uh, you know, extreme kinds of music I was getting into growing up as a kid. You know, everything from death metal and thrash, black metal, of course, uh, grindcore, absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah, I got a lot of roots at punk rock. Yeah, same here. I do photography. I've toured with a couple bands, one being Pro Mags, of course. Um, the other, Green Jello, oh. Green Jelly. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That is an absolute Jelly. shit show. 
<laughs> I think some of the members of Guar, right? Yes. And the main guy for um, the band Max Sabbath came out of Green Jello. Sabbath. Yeah. That's where all the McDonald carried. Yes. They play like uh, seven tunes. <laughs> yeah, of course, Maynard James was the, the high pitch, not by the hair from Tool. And then yeah. Danny Carey was the drummer. Uh, <laughs> you do a great job yeah. with photography, Rhino. I remember Shit Man, Adventures of Shit Man. Yes. We've got to shit, man. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, yeah, somebody fell. Bill told me that somebody fell when they were driving home. Him and Maynard worked construction together, and somebody fell at the ship plant and died. And that's Ooh. where that song originated. <laughs> Talk about a shitty situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, gives, that gives the term shit faced a whole new meaning. Oh, yeah. yeah that's shit wrecked. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. <laughs> it's not the way you want to die that or you don't i mean i wouldn't want to die falling in the shit i absolutely wouldn't want to die masturbating i don't i mean if i don't need that in on, it's <laughs> like who's gonna find me you know <laughs> nobody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey at least you at least you would die happy you know what i'm saying it depends on what stage. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I heard about, you know, it's funny you said that. I heard about that spider. There's a spider that uh, comes from, uh, I think, somewhere in South America. But it's in a, uh, it, it hides like a fruit crate bananas. And if it bites you, you, you die from an erection. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you die with a stiff dick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mexican like, uh, Viagra. Forget about that. Hey, that's what it reminds me of our song, Viagra Overdose Amputation. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're going to go, man, go with a loose erection in your testicles, I guess. So that's how I see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, go hard. Go hard yeah, or go Yeah. Yeah, very brief superpowers. <laughs> yeah. I can shoot up to 20 feet with this thing. <laughs> I feel like there's somebody got cheated. In my good job. <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys are bringing out the worst in me today, but that's all right. What happens if a woman gets bit? Oh, man, you know, that is a good question. That's a good question, Ryan. Oh, shit. Uh, if she, she has an that. erection, I have concerns. Yeah, if she has an erection. <laughs> you, you're going to be strapped in for the whole ride. <laughs> 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 have a blast an anal blast for that man yeah. <laughs> whoa don't hurt me <laughs> no not you guys I'm just talking about it no, in general. tied with a giant camel's coat <laughs> yeah, know, maybe. maybe it gets like inflamed or maybe it's just a big large stuff. what I don't know. I'm not being a moose knuckle <laughs> be a, yeah, like a big giant Powerful, super powered moose knuckle. Oh, <laughs> That's funny. Oh man! Oh my god! <laughs> Questions for the both of you, gentlemen, John and Jim. If you could bring back one dead musician, who would it be and why? Bring back one dead musician. Jeez. For maybe Chuck Schober. Yeah, definitely. From death. I had a good feeling you were going to say that. He was amazing. Well, he, he was in Death was the first death metal band I got into, them in obituary in the late 80s. Yeah, definitely. And it's just it, his way of arranging music. He, he, he didn't sound like nobody else. Man, that's, that's a good question because, uh, man, there's just been so many that's, that's passed away. Uh, you know, Brett Hoffman from uh, Malevolent Creation. Yeah, that, that'd be uh, one of the dudes I'd bring back because uh, Malevolent, Malevolent Creation is just man, they're just like underground death metal heroes. Uh, you know, I had so many of the votes from uh, there's a, a band called uh, Flesh Grind, 
he passed. I remember a flash grind. I'd have to say Brett. I'd have to say Brett Hoffman from. Yes. You know, speaking of flesh grind, you remember? Yeah. You guys remember the album called "Murder Without End" by Flesh Grind? John. Yes, man, that was an awesome album. I would Flesh love to hear. Just great. Uh, I would love to hear you guys yeah, do it just cover. So yeah. I would love to hear you guys do it. Oh album. shit! Duct taped and raped. I mean, yeah, they were underground. Same. Death metal heroes for sure. A great band, absolutely. He was talking about Chuck man, death. Uh, yeah, definitely death really paved the way, you know, for death metal and also mm -hmm. Frost. Man, it's like that. Yeah, Chuck was. Uh, yeah, Chuck. He. Uh, yeah, he he laid the groundwork. You know, definitely he laid the groundwork, and. Uh, uh, definitely the uh, the uh, way for uh, death metal music, stream death metal. That's awesome. But yeah, Chuck Schuldiner, what an amazing musician. Extremely talented, gone way too soon. Oh, yeah. yeah. First time I heard of, first time I heard about death, uh, I <laughs> I bought a, a tape here uh, in Tennessee. It's a place called the Green Acres Flea Market. And I bought that tape for 75 cents and it was Def Leprosy. And that was before I knew anything about Scream Bloody Gore or, uh, you know, uh, Death's uh, Spiritual Healing or Possessed Seven Churches. And, uh, man, I had never heard a sound like that. And uh, just so extreme, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Chuck was great, man. Death's definitely the, uh, definitely the pioneers of, of the craft, death metal music. Sure. What else? I was lucky got? enough to photograph. Sorry, I'm lucky enough to photograph Kelly Conlon. Was he was a death OG, but he was with Pessimist when I got to photograph him. Yeah. Nicest guy. That's great. It's good to be nice to your fellow metalheads. You don't want them to yeah. head off just by grabbing their guitar and they tell you or they decapitate. <laughs> <laughs> I know what what other questions you got for these guys. Uh there's only three minutes and fifty-five seconds left in this segment. I'm having a brain fart at the moment. Okay. When when you get to be my age, all goes downhill. No. Oh. That's okay. I'm fifty-five years old. So. <laughs> okay. An influence that we'd never guess. Something a musical influence that we would never guess. Influence that you we, we you would never guess from us. Well, for me, uh, early Judas Priest, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath. I mean, we, I didn't get into extreme metal until mid late eighties. You know, frankly, I never heard of it, and I just kind of stumbled across uh, Master of Puppets, and I was like, "Wow, this is interesting." And of course, we went for that to Slayer. And then to me, Game Changer, when I started changing up, is when Alters of Madness, uh, Morbid Angel come out. Oh, and then, of course, the early Deicide. We were just talking about Morbid Angel yesterday with Randy Pyro. And Morbid Angel, man, what a, what a game changer they were. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, Alters of Madness. It was a great album. Yeah, because yeah, I basically, you know, back in the 80s, you didn't have the internet and all that stuff, so I based stuff on record labels and album covers. So I seen that, and that's like, well, with an album cover like that, they got to be somewhat good. And yeah, it blew me away. You know, back to talking I'm about... Just going to right now. Uh, you, we were just talking a little bit ago about Metal Maniacs Magazine. Are they still around? Do you guys know? Not that I'm aware of. Man, that's that's then that's how I found out about a lot of uh, bands, a lot of underground, a lot of obscure death metal. Man, I don't know, but yeah, I'd read a review on an album or read an interview. You know, I'd go to uh, we used to have this place here called the Other Record Shop. We also used to have a uh, place called uh, the Disc Exchange, and uh, 
man, every time I find some band that, you know, kind of piqued my interest, I'd, I'd order that stuff right away. And Metal Maniacs was just great. That was good. That was a great magazine. Oh, it does suck. They were a little, they, they uh, were uh, not one to interview Deicide for a long, long time. Because uh, I guess Deicide was steaming up so much controversy back then. Yeah, they, they didn't want to really have anything to do with those guys. And that's unfortunate, too, because those are like, you know, those death metal legends, man. Mm-hmm. I've heard, though, they have, they are a problem live, like booking and staging their oh. shows. They're a problem. I've heard the same thing. Yeah. Two hour sound checks. Two hour Ooh. sound check? Yep. That's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is. <laughs> That's basically the whole show. That's crazy. We'll take a 10-minute interval. All right, I'm going to go on one of Al's questions, except I'm going to totally um, screw it up. Uh-oh. Okay, you can bring back one musician, but in return, you have to sacrifice another musician. Who do you sacrifice? That's gnarly. Yeah, that, that's a hard one to answer. <laughs> Yoko's always out there. Oh yeah, like, you got a point there. Kind of like a ritualistic sacrifice. Yeah, that's yeah. one to bring back uh, the other. Bring back <laughs> Hendrix and send them <laughs> Britney Spears. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened to Michael Jackson. Oh, <laughs> oh. I never thought it that way. Oh. But yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got you get to pick two bands or musicians. They can be past or present. You get to put them in the studio to produce one album together. What musicians or bands go in that studio? Ooh, that's a good album. Album's got to be produced together. They have to make one album. I'd like to see. Uh, I'd like to see Anti Scene and Cot News get together and do a two album. That's some punk rock. Hell yeah. For the death metal, I'd have to say, I want to see Deicide and Diabolic do something. Man, that'd be that'd be maniacal. That's a good one. Yeah, for sure. Again, I don't know about working with Deicide, but yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Morbid Angel and Now. Oh man, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. That would be an interesting twist. You know, doing technical death metal mixed with some old school. Yep. That'd be brutal as fuck, man. That would be brutal. Excellent. What you got, Al? Well, um, why did you guys choose to write death metal music and say, say like, hip-hop or rap or anything like that? Is it because death metal was something that you feel more drawn to? Death metal, I like the format of death metal because you don't know what to expect. You know, it's not like uh, some bands that use two chords the entire song. So for me, that's what drove me to it was the changing of the tempos. I mean, you can have four songs in one where, you know, some of the uh, older rock stuff like that is, you know, basically two, three chords, and they just repeat it over and over. That's a good question. Uh, Why I chose death metal music? Uh, You know, this is music that I've I've grown up with ever since I was a kid. For for me, it's just, you know, it's a dream come true, you know. So I enjoy it. You know, also what's cool about it, I, I get the, creative freedom to write about whatever I want to write about, you know, it's, so I, I, you know, as far as like the, uh, the, uh, uh, lyrical content, the subject matter, I always felt that like, uh, if the music's going to be over the top then the lyrical content, the subject matter should follow suit and act accordingly. So I just, you know, I wanted to write some of the most depraved, just gore, soaked, gore splattered, maniacal stuff, you know, Lots of uh, slasher horror, and uh, I uh, read a lot of I read a lot of uh, uh, books, biographies on uh, homicidal maniacs, uh, you know, cannibalistic serial killers, and just stuff that fascinates me and intrigues me. So you know, 
can't really do that like uh, if I was doing music like Katy Perry or Miley Cyrus or Taylor Swift. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I look at it like this. I look at it like this. They can hit the notes that I can. So Al's a big Dixie Chicks fan. Yeah. And uh, I could do that. Rhino, Rhino's a big fan of the band Stain. He likes to hear that whiny voice of Aaron Lewis. That's with uh, uh, what's that dude's name? Well, let's say for me, yeah. I, I listen to a lot of extreme, but I also listen to you know, I listen to Journey back in the day. I listen to I still like Alanis Morissette. Is that album she came out with? Boy, she was pissed at somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like rain on your radio. Yeah. Here. Instead of wedding day, you guys should make a <laughs> song. <laughs> I could I could just see it happening right now. You guys get up there and just like, okay, this next song goes out to Lance Morris set. Sorry, not. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to uh, I wanted to refer to that uh, that two part question about um, what influences that nobody would think that uh, we would be influenced by. I, I want to answer that one. Uh, I, uh, I like a, man, I'm actually really fond of old country and old bluegrass murder ballads. Oh, yeah? I love that stuff. Yeah. That's uh, you know the song Psycho, uh, written by Leon, uh, sung by uh, Eddie Nowick, and uh, made by uh, Jack Kittle. That song is about a serial killer who uh, he's confessing his bizarre macabre crimes to uh, his uh, mother's dead body. I mean, how how macabre and over the top can you get with that? And that's that's old music. That was like back in like the early sixties. Old country murder ballads. I love that stuff. Yes, that's a really good question that you did come up with, Rhino. And you know, it's interesting because. Nobody's ever asked me that question, but for an influence for me, that's not death metal, believe it or not, would be uh, the band ELO with Jeff Lynn. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, Electric Light Orchestra. There's something oh, about those guys. I just love them, man. Yeah, like they always stick in my head because of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Telephone yeah, yeah. playing in the movie. Yeah, that and band. the live right version of that, man. I remember seeing that video, Don't Bring Me Down, with like the cartoon woman with the big ass thighs. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Thick thighs save lives. That's right. <laughs> they looked at women like in big proportions. Hey, whatever floats your boat, dude. <laughs> kind of like. <laughs> hey, let's talk about. Hell yeah, that's a great. Let's talk about tattoos, you guys. I mean, what would you say is your favorite tattoo? One of my personal favorites on my arm is my Zyklon tattoo. Uh, mine is the skeleton crawl on up my arm. I don't know if you can see it very well, but. Oh, yeah, look at that. Him. Now, him <laughs> yeah, he, he got me beat on tattoos. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, lots of most of the time when I was getting tattoos, I you know I, you know I didn't even know where I was at. It. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, my favorite tattoo that I have, uh, Jason. <laughs> I, I'd have to say the goats. Okay. Uh, you know I, I got a lot. Of my favorite tattoo will always be the next one I'm getting. Hey, oh, yeah. The next one you get. I haven't got it years. It's, it's, it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, it's been a minute since I've gotten it. Yeah. We're going to get Al a teardrop. <laughs> hey, there you go. Oh, God. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> now, this is an off-the-wall question for John himself personally. Okay. How do, you, how do you blow your nose with all those nose rings? Or do you have to take them out? 
How do I blow my nose? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> very uh, carefully. Took the words right out of my head, man. Really, I, I don't think it's like, uh, it's not only that, but it's also trying to like dig in my nose. <laughs> oh, Quite God. Uh, like I've always seen, it look like you got a tackle box. <laughs> yeah, a tackle box. <laughs> nice. Man, okay, that's... so Al normally asks this question, so I'm going to jump in and steal this question from him. Go for it, right? Pornhub or OnlyFans? Well, what, what was the question again? Pornhub or OnlyFans? Oh, God. I don't oh, Normally Al asks it. No. That is a good question. Uh, I'd go with OnlyFans. Well, I mean, hey, uh, you know, <laughs> you, know uh, you, you can get tapped into a whole whole other network on OnlyFans. Oh, you talking about OnlyFans? Yeah. I, I seen the meme the other day. It said OnlyFans twenty two dollars RB seven ninety nine. <laughs> I don't see why. You know what? Well, I, I don't see people. why. Like, it's, you know, <laughs> like folks complain about like uh, you know how women get up on OnlyFans and they're making money. I mean, so what? Let them let them do what they want to do. Best. Don't give a shit. Hey, there's some men out there doing the same thing. It's all that matters, right? I suppose. No matter how uh, fucked up. <laughs> Guys like feet. They got all kinds of feet. <laughs> I don't understand that one. I don't like I my don't own feet. <laughs> Why do I want to see someone else? Well, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Maybe some of the drones is corn chips. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's some toe jam. <laughs> Tastes great. <laughs> I don't know. Some of those only for fangirls have mud flaps, so that's a little iffy. Hey. <laughs> hey, all right. Well, you know what they say? Loose lips sink ships. There you go. Yeah. Some mud flappers. <laughs> 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 You know, yeah, just, man, you know, I say, you look, you know, yeah. hurting anybody, whatever you, you know, however you make your money and, you know, go let the ladies go nuts. <laughs> it was like years ago, I used to, uh, local band when I still live in South Carolina, the name of the band was Meat Curtains. Hey, Meat Curtains. <laughs> Can you you show your meat only fans. You remember the band called the Meat Shits? I uh, most certainly have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They were they were actually the very first well known death metal band that put me in their thanks list. Oh, cool! Awesome. Yep, me really great like guy. What's that? Yeah, me curtains. <laughs> That's such a crazy name. Me shits. Yep, Robert Deathridge. I don't know if that <laughs> I don't know if that dude's still alive or if he's just hiding out in a bomb shelter or something. Yeah, who knows? I have not heard the band Meat Shits in a long time. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah some people yeah, don't know about them. Sounds I suppose. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to steal meat some Rhino's questions and ask you guys this <laughs> one. Um, what goes <laughs> on the sandwich? Mayonnaise or miracle <laughs> whip? Oh. Mayonnaise. I, I'll have to go with mayonnaise, but you know, I don't like it when it's you know, slopped up on there, you know, it's just very lively. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like both. I'd have to go with mayonnaise. Very cool. I don't know. I've tried Miracle with. Yeah, Miracle is basically long. salad dressing in a jar. Yeah, it's not salad dressing in Yeah. Yeah, it's got that tanging. Okay, okay non-horror related stuff. Can't be a horror movie. What's your favorite movie outside of horror? Oh, mine's got to be Lord of the Rings trilogy. Man, that's all I. I'm a I'm a horror movie slasher bad man. That's why I threw I, that out out there just to get a different taste. I would have to say uh, favorite movie. Uh, you know, I liked uh, I liked Bambi. You know, that was a good movie. Yeah, 
liked them when I was a kid. I don't know, man. I don't watch a lot of a lot of uh, movies that aren't horror. It's, I'm just a I'm a I'm a horror motherfucker. Right? <laughs> oh, you know what? I do got one. Um, if it wasn't gonna be horror, I am a big uh, I like a lot of uh, old uh, spaghetti westerns. So I'd have to go with uh, uh, Good and Bad and the Ugly. Ah, that's a classic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like those spaghetti westerns, man. But I'm I'm horror business twenty four seven. That's that's I love watching horror. Big fan. But I love the spaghetti westerns. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't all. like Danzig's attempt at them. That was just awful. I heard about <laughs> that. Uh, I don't know. I I haven't seen it. I can't. I don't. A lot of people said that it sucked. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't really listen to what like people like. You know, when they they critique a movie, you know, you kind of got to go in it on your own, right? watch it for yourself, yeah. and then take it from there. But yeah, he did the uh, vampire uh, spaghetti western. Movie. Yes. Then, yeah. Oh yeah, they, I ran. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so I ran into John Christ. I did a photo shoot for him um, early this year. And oh. if you say Danzig 4, he'll instantly go, instantly go I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, John Christ was phenomenal. Uh, you know, like that. And, you know, I, that's the thing about Danzig. I, I grew up with a lot of uh, you know, uh, Danzig era misfits and Sam yes. Hayes, for sure. Uh, his solo stuff, I, I like some of his solo stuff. Danzig Sigmund's Elvis, I can't handle. That's just. He, he was called, I think he was called Helvis. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Helvis. It's funny you guys mentioned that because if it was up to me, I would be calling myself Alvis. Hey, hey, all right. Yeah. Sorry, I had to throw that out there. I can still be Rhino, right? Hey, yeah, you can say, man. That's, that's definitely your official nickname, sir. That's it. <laughs> okay, this is a question for you guys. Um, since Rhino brought up that question about, you know, non-horror related movies as to what your favorite movie is. Uh, what what band or bands do you like to listen to as a guilty pleasure? Uh, you want to take that one? <laughs> Rhino, 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 well, you got to be. He was. He was not happy. happy. No, I mean, for me personally, it would, be, uh, it would be the cult. Guilty. You remember that band, the cult. Cult. Yeah, Sonic Temple. Good uh, album. The cult. I ain't heard that band in a long time. Uh, like guilty pleasure. Yeah, or something that you, you know, really I, I gotta say, I, I don't believe in guilt. I think you know you you like what you like. You know what I mean? I mean, even if it's like outside of like you know anything like you know extreme or death metal or anything brutal or you know it's hey you like it and that's all that matters. You know? Yeah, that's I, don't know, I don't have any guilty pleasures. I like I like all different kinds of music, man. You know, it's not one set. You know, I listen to a Mixed bag of things, wide variety of stuff. Yeah. I like Slim Whitman. I like Archie Blue. I like uh, uh, Lightning Hopkins. I like Muddy Waters. Uh, That's really cool. I, just, I don't know. I, I, yeah. You like you like what you like, and that's that's all that matters. Exactly. My next yeah. question is: I don't know if we I don't know if we asked you guys this. Do you guys have any hobbies outside of music? Like, what do you like to do when you're not Hobbies. in the rehearsal space? 
Me, I'm a couch potato. <laughs> I, I work 60 to 72 hours a week, so. Uh, I, uh, I like books, but I only read like one book because I, I, I don't really like going out too much society but uh i got this uh, book that i read uh called uh uh cannibalism uh throughout the centuries what i read um uh, <laughs> it's a you know macabre nature of reading you know uh, i did have this one book that i really enjoyed called ed gein psycho and uh i really liked that one a lot that was really interesting as a matter of fact Songs like uh, Cadaver Skin and Feast and Peace that we've done, you know, I've, you know, read those songs, uh, lyrics, uh, based on uh, the uh, bizarre and macabre crimes of Ed Gein, man, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But as far as, like, hobbies, like, what I do, I don't do shit. I'm boring. <laughs> but I'm boring. I don't do much. Uh, you know, I go to work. Uh, you know, I do like to, I do like to get out, you know, and, just get away from the world, you know. I was gonna say you know, out with, fishing or anything like that. No. What's that? I was gonna say you don't like to go out fishing or say maybe go you know, hunting for some deer yeah. or rabbit or whatever. I just, I don't like to go out and experience nature altogether. I haven't been fishing in quite a while. Last time I went fishing was, uh, geez, I was I was with my. Uh, my my father, that was, that was a, a little while back. Uh, used to like to go to Cherokee, do a lot of uh, you know, fishing, and you know, like, like a, a loud. You know. But I I don't know, man. I'm you know, I'm I'm boring. I'm, <laughs> I'm no fun. People like you know they'll they'll like see see me on social media and they're like, oh man, he's wild. No, uh, uh. no, I, I'm fucking boring. I am no fun at all. <laughs> yeah, that's how some. <laughs> We're gonna have to have some music to us. A lot of fashion movies, so listen a lot of music. We're gonna have to get out that pizzazz jar and just like, here, dude, have some pizzazz, lighten up your life, stop being boring. <laughs> all right, what do you think <laughs> Al's hobbies are? What do I think Alex's hobbies are? I don't know. Uh, model airplanes? No, not quite. <laughs> well, I fucked up that question. Bro. <laughs> you know what, man? As a matter of fact, as a teenager, I used to love doing model airplanes. I used to do them all the time. Those, model cars and stuff. All right, what are my hobbies? Sleeping. You like at sleep as a hobby, don't you, Rhino? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you and your Mountain Dew, future diabetic. Yeah, I'm probably <laughs> already there, but yeah, my, my blood type is Mountain Dew. No, I'm not endorsed, but thank you, Pepsi. <laughs> well, they came up with all kinds of new flavors. Of Mountain Dew. You guys yeah. tried any of those? I have actually. Oh boy, here goes Al. All right, um, where do I begin? There's just too many to list, okay? I'll just put it out there like this. Mountain Dew has, more, Mountain Dew has more flavors than condoms. What are they going to come out with next? Mountain Dew flavored condoms? Yeah. <laughs> or condom flavored Mountain Dew? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Could you imagine? What, what what flavor mountain Dew? Mountain, cream, mountain Dew. I think I think big market. That shit sell like hotcakes, especially here. All you see is everybody slamming Mountain Dews all the time. Yeah, personally, oh, my yeah. favorite Mountain Dew would be honestly it's a uh, Goji Citrus Strawberry, and it's only found at certain gas stations like uh, All Subs. And I'm trying to think of another gas station that sells it, but it's good. You know, it's not an exclusive flavor, like how Applebee's has dark berry or whatever. And then you got Sam's Club, who's mm -hmm. got gray monsoon and K 
Casey's who's got overdrive. There's, there's just so many of them out there. It's just, it's too much to talk about as far as Mountain Dew, but Mountain Dew is definitely my favorite soda other than Coca-Cola. Well, unfortunately, I'm diabetic, so I got to stay away from that stuff. <laughs> so zero sugar Mountain Dew for you. I'm five right? years clean. Oh, that's no better. That shit still produces the insulin. I forget what saccharin still makes your body produce insulin. It thinks it's sugar. Yeah, I noticed uh, that. Yeah. I noticed that they don't use saccharin anymore. They use like sucralose and uh, aspartame. And aspartame is really nasty stuff. You know, I I don't yeah. ever like it. So it leaves that really foul taste in your mouth when you're done drinking one of those things with aspartame in it, you know? You take a swig and you're just like, oh, yeah. no wonder it's called aspartame, you know what I mean? Because it tastes yeah. like <laughs> afterwards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. Not me, uh... I live on... Do what? I live on water and beer. Uh, there you go. Water's better and I found this stuff called yeah. liquid IV. It's a hydration multiplier. Like, that is badass. Yeah, I pretty much live off of water and beer, too. <laughs> With me, it's coffee, Mountain Dew, and purified water. I do drink a lot of water, though. I can't lie. Got to keep myself active, you know? Don't oh, yeah. want to be sluggish, you know? Jump up on stage, and next thing you know, you forget your lyrics, and you're like, I'm sorry, I can't do this song right now. I'm gonna steal. I'm gonna steal another question of Rhinos. Um, this is a question that he, he usually asks. Uh -oh. But do you guys have any pre-show rituals? We have not played live yet. That's huh? what I was thinking. Yeah, we have, we have not played live. As a matter of fact, we are uh, in the transition of uh, rehearsing uh, the material off of the uh, insufferable disemboweling experiment. Album. And uh, you know, it's so that material is, is it's it's for me, know. it's beer, water, and warming up. It because I, I played a lot before in previous bands, so and make sure I got my water, my beer, and at least 15 minutes of just playing, you know, not plugged up or nothing, just to get it keep all the muscles from cramping up on me. Yep. I won't say who this was, but I was backstage months ago and the singer is walking the green room over and over singing like um Mother Goose type shit. Just over like oh, yeah. I'll say whatever works. Yeah. Go what you know. <laughs> no more yeah, you was... know. Sorry, I had to throw it out. <laughs> Got any other questions right now? I can't think of anything right I now. I don't actually. Okay. I figured I'd just see if you had anything. So where are the two? Go ahead. No, um, my brain's farting. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so what are the future plans for traumatic asphyxia? I know you guys want to get out there and do some shows, but what else would you like what else would you guys like to experience? Well, for me, is to you know do the practicing so we can play out some live shows. Eventually, I'm going to start writing some new material for our second effort. I've already got some song titles. Just got to put some music to it and get some lyrics. Okay. Are you allowed to just? Yeah, any plans of bringing a drummer in? Sorry. Oh, that ahead. I'm not. The only reason I played without a drummer is when I moved here, I didn't know anybody. So I was like, well, you know, I, I, I give that uh, easy drummer a chance. And I, I was kind of blown away about because, you know, it's not like the old releases days where everything sounds like a Thompson machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes those so, things happen. Hard to find any drummers that can, you know, play 
you know, any kind of like death metal drummers or anything like here, it's you know, all the drummers are taken. You know, it's kind of it's few and far between. Yeah, I was gonna say it's kind of hard to find a drummer. Today. He's already in five other bands. Yeah, right. Just five. That's the thing. Too. <laughs> But I, I kind of like this, the way it's set up, because I can work at it at my own pace. If there's something I don't like, I can go back and edit it. That's really cool. With Nightmare Crypt, we're using a drum machine, too. So I can I can definitely relate to that, because there's I don't think there's anything wrong with using a drum machine. I mean, look at Mortician. Well, I mean, if you look at uh, the tune track, those are actually all uh, real drummers where they just recorded and they looped it. So I know uh, one of the programs they use is uh, the drummer from Cattle Decapitation. That's one wicked band out there, Cattle Decapitation. I love their stuff. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite. What's your favorite album? By them, I like humanure. Yeah, I like humanure, but their newer stuff is good too. I mean, that newest one they come out with, uh, uh, the Atlas that came out. Oh yeah, right as one. the yeah, it came out right as the scandemic, as I call it. Scandemic. <laughs> There's another one in the works. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you could use that as a song title. You guys might want to write that one down. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, a suggestion, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm ready for the final question. If you guys oh, are. Okay. Do you have any last words for Underground Noise Webzine? Yeah. I know I do. Uh, first off, man, thanks for uh, thanks for having us on your show. You guys are really doing something for uh, underground metal music, both of you, Alex Rhino, of course. Uh, yeah, this has been great. You know, I've had a I've had a blast. It's been fun. Yeah, sure would like to do another one sometime. Absolutely, we'll definitely have you as any guests. Go ahead, John. I mean, Jim, I'm sorry. Yes, I was going to say, I was going to say just uh, thank you for supporting us, little guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you for putting the music out. Yeah, the world oh, needs more of it, most definitely. And thank well, you. We just guys enough. I mean, you know, and, and also, like, you know, any anybody, you know, all our, our friends that, uh, you know, just dig on what we're doing and, uh, Underground, uh, extreme, brutal death metal music. You know, fans are where it's at. You know, uh, yeah, they're they're a part of it, and uh, yeah, man, we're glad that you had us on your show. Yeah, a real good time. I yeah, we're we're fun. glad that we could give you you got his uh your first interview. Oh yeah, yeah, it was our first interview. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, there it is, metalheads and rockers. Keep your horns up for metal and rock, and also support your local music scene, support underground noise web scene, support traumatic asphyxia, and remember, there's never enough music. Coming up on Tuesday is a surprise guest. I won't say who it is, just because I want it to be a surprise. So until then, Everyone. stay tuned. It's going to be Tony Blair. No, I'm just kidding. That's oh. not... Ha, 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 ha.